welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, founder of the Tudor Society and also author of this book. And I'm actually going to read an extract from this book today for the 25th of February. At just before 8am on the 25th of February 1601, Robert Devereux, 2nd Earl of Essex, was brought out of the Tower of London and walked to the scaffold. He was wearing a black velvet gown, black satin doublet and breeches, and a black hat, which he took off as he climbed up onto the scaffold so that he could bow to the people gathered. He then made a speech, acknowledging with thankfulness to God that he was justly spewed out of the realm, and said, My sins are more in number than the hairs on my head. I bestowed my youth in wantonness, lust and uncleanness. I have been puffed up with pride, vanity and love of this wicked world's pleasures. For all which I humbly beseech my Saviour Christ to be my mediator to the eternal majesty for my pardon, especially for this my last sin, this great, this bloody, this crying, this infectious sin, whereby so many for love of me have been drawn to offend God, to offend their sovereign, to offend the world. I beseech God to forgive it me, most wretched of all. After then praying that God would preserve the Queen and asking the crowd to join him in prayer, he begged God to forgive his enemies. He then removed his gown and ruff and knelt at the block, looking up at the sky and saying the Lord's Prayer. After forgiving the executioner who knelt in front of him, Essex repeated the creed and then took off his doublet as it was covering his neck to display a waistcoat of scarlet, the colour of martyrs. He laid himself on the block, stretched out his arms and prayed, Lord, be merciful to thy prostrate servant. Lord, into thy hands I commend my spirit. After repeating two verses of Psalm 51, he could take no more and cried out, Executioner, strike home! The executioner swung his axe to behead Essex, but unfortunately it took three blows to sever his neck. When the deed was finally done, the executioner held the head aloft, shouting, God save the Queen! It was the end of a man who'd given Elizabeth I much joy, but also much anger during her later years. Doyne C. Bell, author of Notices of the Historic Persons Buried in the Chapel of St. Peter Ad Vincula in the Tower of London, writes of how the body and head of Essex were put into a coffin and buried in the chancel of the chapel to the right of the resting places of the Earl of Arundel and the Duke of Norfolk. Trivia. Essex's executioner was Thomas Derrick, a man whom Essex had pardoned for rape on the condition that he become an executioner. Now, I wanted to share with you some actual context to that execution. You know, what led to his execution? You know, how did he go from being um, a man that brought Elizabeth uh, much joy to being uh, someone that angered her? Well, Robert Devereux, Earl of Essex, had been brought to court by his stepfather, Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, Queen Elizabeth I's favourite, in 1584. Now Leicester died in 15, um, 1588 sorry, and at that point Robert Devereux uh, seemed to replace um, his stepfather in the Queen's affections. He was 23 at that time and the 55 year old Queen seemed to dote on him perhaps because he was a link to uh, you know Dudley Earl of Leicester who you know, I believe that she had really, really loved. But although he was young, good-looking, charming, fun, he was also reckless and arrogant. And, and you know, he admits to, to that being puffed up with pride in, that, in his execution speech. And he constantly underestimated Queen Elizabeth and overestimated her affection for him and her patience. 
And at times he he almost bullied her uh, into submission, into sort of going with, with what he wanted. Now, when he was made lieutenant in Ireland and went over to Ireland to deal with the troubles over there, he ignored the Queen's orders. He decided to do his own thing and he made a truce with the Irish rebels without the Queen's say-so. He just totally ignored what she wanted and did what he felt was right. And then comes his undoing. He'd obviously angered her for doing that. But in 1601, he planned a coup with the aim of forcing the Queen to deal with um, his enemies, as he saw them, a rival faction at court, which was led by Robert Cecil, who was son of William Cecil, uh, Lord Burley. Uh, Robert had become um, Elizabeth's Secretary of State. So there were these rival factions that called those that supported Robert Cecil and those that supported the Earl of Essex. And on the 8th of February, the rather arrogant and proud uh, Essex led what is now termed as Essex, um, Essex's Rebellion. He and his supporters uh, and soldiers marched from his home, Essex House, into the city of London. But the Londoners refused to come out and support him. And his seeing that, his supporters who were marching uh, started to sort of disband and desert him. Um, he went home um, and he was forced to surrender when um, they threatened the, the, the government, uh, the crown, um, threatened to blow up his house if he didn't come out and surrender. So he eventually surrendered. He was then tried for high treason. He was found guilty and sentenced to death and obviously sentenced to a full traitor's death. Fortunately for him, his sentence was commuted uh, to beheading and Elizabeth I signed his death warrant on the 20th, 20th of February, 1601. And of course, he died on the 25th of February, 1601. So that's what led to his execution. It really, he went from being, you know, doted on by the Queen to being a complete nightmare for her because of his arrogance, because he felt that he could do his own thing all the time and try and control her. And Elizabeth was not having any of that. So poor, poor Earl of Essex for completely underestimating Queen Elizabeth. Anyway, you can subscribe to the channel by just clicking there and hit the bell to be notified of new videos because, of course, they're coming on a daily basis. Um, I will see you tomorrow with some more uh, Tudor trivia. Take care. Bye-bye.